I lasted nine days on Iwo. I was on Saipan, Tinian, and the Iwo Jima. Saipan and Tinian, I went through the, the, the two campaigns without, like I said, without a scratch. Then, of course, we went to Iwo Jima, and uh, that was a completely different story. Uh, I made the landing, went through the first airfield, fought on the second airfield. While we were fighting on the second airfield, it's the first time a B-29 came in and landed right, right where we were fighting because it was kind of banged up and he was running out of fuel. So while he was there, you ought to see these guys running around with the five gallon cans, pouring, pouring the, uh, the, the fuel into the, into the tank. Now, uh, they finally got, got, the, got the heck out of there and boy, let me tell you something. I looked, I was watching that thing take off and I said, boy, I wish I was going with them. <laughs> and then we passed one particular uh, battle, which was uh, Turkey Knob. And two days later, we came to a place called the Amphitheater. It was a flat piece of ground, and way on the edges, of, like for a couple of miles, was like short, short to shale mountains, like. And it looked like an amphitheater. That's where it got the name. And that's where I got, I got hit. I got hit with what they call the Japanese Nambu machine gun. As I was laying around in the, in the dirt there, it wasn't volcano ash, but it was, it was dirt because we were far in. These three Japs got out of their hole and came, came on over to finish me off. But I managed to hold on to my rifle. And I kept on firing at them. I don't think I even hit any, but it slowed them down. Shortly afterward, you heard this here whirring sound of a, of a tank. They heard it and they went right back into their holes again and they disappeared. This tank now was starting to come up closer. And the tank commander with the bullhorn said, lay perfectly still. We're going right over you. I said, I'm going to die now. I'm going to die. Likewise. I mean, the tank, <laughs> if you ever seen a tank move, it doesn't move, you know, evenly. Like, it jerks like, like that. Well, he finally went over me, and all of a sudden I heard that clank. It was the escape hatch on the bottom. They grabbed a hold of me by the dungaree jack and they pulled me right in the inside. And the one thing I could always remember, they sunk the needle right in the, my back over here, right in the muscle in the back. Needless to say, perfect euphoria. <laughs> Jeez, I was like floating. So nice. Now the mortars are going off and this tank has got to get out of there. He gave one blast to this air cave, turned around and went back. Well, they took me to the beach. They got this air shelter half. It was more like a poncho or shelter half, whatever it was. And they carried me maybe about another 50 yards there on the beach, and they laid me down. Now the beach is like this, on an angle. Tier after tier after tier after tier. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dead and wounded Marines laying there. 
the moaning, the groaning, and the ones calling for their mothers, calling for God, calling for anything. How I managed to hold it without going off my rocker, I'll never know. I'll never know. I was attached to the fifth when we landed on it. I got the little story. They had hit our ammo dump and the stuff was flying all over. And this buddy of mine and I, we ran and dove in a hole. And a shell landed close to us, blew us right up in the air and back down. Well, when we got our senses back, I had no feeling in my legs. So I said to him, Russ, Russ, okay. I lost my legs, I lost my legs. He said, you damn fool, look down there. They're there. So I looked there, and then I felt something wet. I looked there, and there was a little hole in my leg. There was a piece of shrapnel, like a little lead pencil stuck in there. So rather than call a corpsman, I pulled it out, and they give you these first aid kits with the sulfur and the bandage. So I threw some sulfur on it and banded it up because I didn't want to call a corpsman because they were working on a guy next to me who had both legs on, and, and I just let it go with that. But that was one of the experiences on that island. I can't get this thing. Quite a thing.